Well, hello and welcome back. Today we're uh, doing a quick look at the Colt Junior. Now, the Colt Junior is basically a continuation of the Colt Model N that I have right here. And a brief history on the Colt Model N is this is a direct copy of the Fabrique National uh, John Browning design of 1905. Colt wanted to compete with the pocket hammerless. Uh, sale success that FN was enjoying. So Browning used their uh, design that was so successful with Colts and came up with this little pocket pistol. Now this little pocket pistol here is chambered in 25 ACP and it uh, worked well for Colts. It sold 408,000 of uh, these from 1908 through 1947. Production of these actually ended in uh, December of 1940 and uh, the ones that were produced in 1946 to 47 there was approximately 2100 of them and that was part of uh, cleaning up the inventory Colts had of uh, used parts. As I've said before Colt used everything and wasted nothing and after World War II there was still a demand for these little pocket 25 so Colt tried to uh, develop a post-war model in and they did develop one in a 22 long rifle but they never produced it because they could not compete with the less expensive imported models so Colt's answer to that was to contract with Astra of Spain and use Astra's basically their cub model and that's what this Colt Jr. is. Now they made the Astra, or excuse me, they made the Colt Jr. from 1958 is when it was first sold in the United States until 1968 and then again from 71 to 73. Now the reason they stopped in 1968 was the uh, uh, gun control of 1968 banned the importation of certain types of guns and this of course being one of them. Then from 1971 to 73 uh, they resumed again here in the United States and there's a quote from the 1977 edition of Modern Firearms that says the importation of some fine firearms was curtailed by the Gun Control Act of 1968. FIE, an Italian company, established a branch location in Miami, Florida and was able to skirt some importation issues. FIE relied on jobbers to supply most parts and needed to make a complete firearm. Some of the noted suppliers being CZ, Astra, and Star. So that's the base history of these. Now there was one recall with these and that being that if the gun was carried in the cocked position with the safety on, if it was dropped or jarred, it could uh, ignite the round by the firing pin striking it. So that was one of the things that uh, was done with these and one of the recalls. Otherwise it was a pretty solid pistol. And Anyhow, um, we'll go ahead and go through some of the differences between these. Um, here you can see a model from 1958. This is a 841 serial number and uh, it has of course the black hard rubber grips and you can see in these later models the uh, checkered wooden grips. Now um, the ones that were made in Spain of course are stamped right here on the frame very clearly made in Spain for Colts but they also have the uh, CC sir, uh, suffix after the serial number. Now the ones that were made from 1971 to 73 have the OD prefix on them and okay so some of the other things on these is they were either offered in um, 25 ACP as this one here is or they were offered in the 22 short like this one right here. Now some of the functions on these that make them a little bit different from the Colt model in. We'll go ahead and pull these other ones out of the way real quick so we can compare the two. You can see that the model in one of the reasons it was so popular is it had the grip safety and it had the thumb safety. Now as you can see on the Junior there is no grip safety and they do have the thumb safety though which is nice so if you happen to be right handed you can quickly release that if you're carrying it with one in the chamber condition one ready to go and uh, this also doubles as a slide lock so you can uh, t uh, do a quick field strip of your pistol and 
We'll go back to some of the differences now. As you can see, the magazine release on the Model N is located here on the underside, and here on the Colt Jr., it is closer to a 1911 style with a push button depression here, so you can release your magazine. Um, the other thing, too, is the uh, Colt Model N is uh, truly hammerless, being striker fired, and here we have an exposed hammer, of course, on this Colt Jr. Now, the sights on these are a little bit different. Here we actually have sights that are up and nice big square sight groove on the back of this Colt Jr. and more of the military style front serrated sight that you see on like the later uh, pocket hammerless design. And then this of course has the sight groove in the top of the pistol making it much more sleek, less things to catch on your clothes if you're carrying it in your pocket. So there you go, that's some of the differences there. Um, the frame on the uh, Colt Jr., as you can see, is just slightly longer, maybe three-eighths to a half an inch longer. Um, it does have uh, more things sticking out. I mean, they're trying to keep you from getting a hammer uh, bite right there by putting the little uh, tail on it. But there you go. That's some of the differences there. Not much else. Um, some of the other things, as you can see, the production of these never really changed much at all. From the earliest to the latest models, these look pretty much the same. Now the overall quality of these from working on them, I feel, is less than what the uh, Colt product was. So, uh, you know, you get what you pay for a cheaper import. Um, just not quite the same quality. Now these little pocket pistols, sometimes it's hard to judge the scale of them on camera, so I'll go ahead and I'll move the Model N and the Junior over here, and then I'm going to go ahead and set my government model uh, from 1924. I've got this beautiful old beat-up shooter. <laughs> anyway, you can see the difference between them here. Um, quite, a, quite a difference, so give you an idea of the scale. Okay, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you later.